wish to give my parting thanks to the British public and to assure them that I shall ever gratefully cherish most pleasant memories of their kindness and hospitality, even higher than the pecuniary success with which they have crowned my efforts to please them. I thus address the world through the medium of the latest wonderful invention, Edison's photograph, so that my voice, like my great show, will reach future generations and be heard centuries after I have joined the great, and as I believe, happy majority. Crow art. I'm trying to think of not, something not too cornball. I want to call Joe just a visionary. I kind of knew he was over the top. I mean, you look at the building, you know that he's not the average Joe Smell. And uh, he makes the news. You, ha you have to be a promoter. And, and clearly, Joe is one of Ocean City's best. Outside, it's just like a call for attention. It's like insane the amount of art. Like, you have layers of art that you can go through, and it's just endless. It's incredible. There's nothing like it. And uh, so when it comes to art, there's no such thing as, as, as weird or this. It, it, if you like it, good for you. Oh, he's weird. <laughs> Joe, he's out of his mind. Only because he has a vision, and that's true in many places in his life. First thing that kind of comes to mind is if you combine uh, Ringling Brothers and Bill Nye, the science guy, you might kind of get an idea of what Joe is. For over 30 years, the Ocean Gallery World Center has been owned and operated by the man in the tux, Joe Proart. Yeah, that's his real last name, Proart, with a hyphen. Art is half of Joe's name and all of his passion. How would I describe my father to someone who has never met him? Well, if you were to meet him away from the gallery, he would be polite and friendly, 
and but somewhat reserved. But it's very, very different when he's at the gallery because there he's the ringleader. Boardwalk and the spotlight. This is uh, Travel Channel. Pick this one of the top. The Hot L is the front page of the Sun. They had a Hot L section. All right, this is recent stuff. This is more boring. See that one? Yeah, astounding. That's the car. That's the car I wanted to drive off the pier. We count the birth of Ocean Gallery as him at age 22, senior in college, selling paintings from the back of his car or on the porch or whatever. And then after that, starting to uh, leave in college, dating my mom, working as a teacher, coming down here and like, yeah, putting like as little money into being here as possible because real life is back there. You know, you don't want to pay rent on a place down here. What I have noticed and what he's even said to me is that he doesn't remember dates. <laughs> As a college student finishing up a course one summer, I didn't have a part-time job or didn't have a job and I wanted to do something, so I thought, well, I'm going to take all my paintings and throw them in my car and drive to Ocean City, try and sell them in Ocean City, and that's what I did. Um, finally found a store that was unrented on Baltimore Avenue, and I went to John Dale Shell's father and said, look, it's not rented, you're getting no rent, I will rent it for 20% of what I could sell. And here's a guy who owns several hotels in town, and he's operating a multi-million dollar business, and he's looking at a artist, and he said yes. And I think the fact that he had faith in me on that was incredible. I lived in a chicken carry out, I sold my paintings all day long, went on the beach a little bit, cooled off, worked till midnight, and uh, what I did that summer was establish the first Ocean Gallery. Bad news was in September, the, his secretary called me and said the, the chicken carryout had been rented. And so I didn't have a place for the next year. But then I found a hotel on the boardwalk. Guys had just bought this big hotel, the Colonial Hotel, and it had a big porch. So I approached them and I said, you know, I was interested in renting their porch. And, um, they were receptive to that because they wanted to get more income for their building. So I made that long, narrow porch a gallery. Now the trick of it was, it's okay folks, come right in. The trick of it was it wasn't a store. So every day in the morning I had to put all the inventory out, make it look like a long, narrow gallery, make it look impressive. Once I was there, I was captive for 12, 14 hours a day. My idea was so many people start and start art galleries and they're around for just a couple months and they go under because they can't support it. But we literally recycle everything and we have, including this building. This building is made from recycled building parts from the old Colonial Hotel, which burned down. It's a half a block away from here. They had the place at First Street, uh, part of a hotel. He'll be able to tell you more. But eventually they had a big fire. The hotel was destroyed by fire one winter and devastated us, completely wiped us out. When was that? That was in <laughs> the year it's upstairs. Like 75, 74, 75. So we got involved with a corporation up here on Second Street. And the trick was that there weren't any stores. So I had to build the stores. I had never built anything in my life. I found three young guys who were electrician, plumbers, and who could do it. And we used recycled lumber from the hotel that had burned down. Uh, we salvaged from that. We salvaged from a, a building that was in the back where a parking lot is now. We tore that building down and used that materials and built the stores on the front. And that winter, I had two young kids and my whole family was here the whole winter and I worked when it was 20 degrees and 25 degrees in the cold all winter. I was the laborer, I was the one that carried the sheetrock, 
that's how we got it built. So they were in a different place in their lives, where now also being like the same age that they were when they had a couple of little kids and were starting a business, I now understand why that was totally insane. Like um, to be juggling, uh, to have your break time be going home with your little kids. Now as an adult, I kind of respect like that was like very gutsy to be like, I guess I'll just leave security even though I have two children and hope that this gamble on this art store year round in Ocean City can work. This is an exciting place. Yes. We're filmed all the time. We're in two movies. We're being considered for a TV That's reality awesome. show. This is something else. This is a documentary. A national TV documentary. Yeah, I figure. Isn't it wild? Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. You know, you got to enjoy life and appreciate life. And I do all this stuff because it makes people smile. And then the other stuff comes along with it. Okay, I'll, I'll bite what's in the jar. You got to. This is Titanic water. Titanic water. Now, I'm going to leave this here at the station today. It's pretty rare stuff. Somebody else drink it. This is taken <laughs> directly from the body of water that at this very moment is touching the Titanic. That's right. <laughs> right. It's all connected. <laughs> you can make iced tea out of it, too. Oh, you're horrible. You like Joe salt Crow Art, listen, there's a mug for you, yeah. pal. Don't glue it on the car. You know what? You should glue that to the You should glue that to the side of your building. <laughs> Well, it was done in the style of Strollkirchen, which is a 15th century German church. The Dutch roof style, I like that effect. I think Joe is a marketing genius. Back in 82, I came to Ocean Gallery presenting some of my limited edition prints. Everything is drawn in there with fine point pencils. I did rearrange a few things, but because I spent about 250 hours of drawing time on the original, it was different. I've worked with over 200 art galleries. And I found that uh, this store was so overwhelming with the pictures. I mean, hanging from the ceiling, every style of art you could imagine. It was amazing. First time I walked in here in 1982, I was overwhelmed too by everything. I think that, very honestly, my brothers and I had a different childhood. A standing! A standing! Hold your hands up, Lar! Yay! <laughs> All right, now say a standing! A standing! Yay! Put your hands down! Yeah! Don't put your hands down! You know, my brothers are 20 years older than I am, 17 and 19 years older than I am. And when they were little, my parents split time going back and forth between. They had an apartment briefly on 3rd Street, and then they got the 2nd Street spot. Um, which made it a lot easier to come back and forth, but my parents switched roles, um, either being here behind the counter and selling stuff or being home watching a, like, two-year-old and a five-year-old, which is not really a break. My wife, my poor wife, who married a school teacher and thought she was going to have a quiet wife, <laughs> is in the back of all this stuff, and she really wants to stay out of the limelight that you met at Bill. And she goes to places, like she'll go to have a dental appointment or she'll go somewhere, the vets or something, and they ask for the name or they get the credit card and they say, Crow Art, that's that place in Ocean City! <laughs> has been brought to you by Ocean Gallery World Center. Copies of this video are available for $16.98. Mail directly to Post Office Box 530, Ocean City, Maryland. And we thank you for your attention. Excuse me for a commercial break. <laughs>
Ocean Gallery. Ocean, Ocean Gallery. Oh, well, there's an Ocean Gallery in Rehoboth. There's a one, uh, one at second in Boardwalk. Those are the two current Ocean Galleries. Okay? Second in Boardwalk, right, right. Yes. That's correct, yeah. It's a real big building. It's a parking lot in the rear. Okay? Yeah, let me give you somebody to help you with that, because that artist is in person. I think I talked to you already once today. Um, yeah, okay. Let me give you somebody that's not at the front counter. Wait a minute. Rosemary, can you pick up? <clears throat> can you pick up the phone? We're in the middle of a TV programming. Can we have your attention, please? Your attention, please. And please, Ocean Gallery World Center, it's astounding! Stop in and see us today. That's Ocean Gallery World Center, it's astounding! Astounding! It's astounding! Astounding! What is it, Lar? Astounding! Right! Astounding! Ocean Gallery World Center, it's a... Okay, right, thank you. College kid comes to Ocean City and founds a business. This one is huge. This one is like an ocean liner. It's huge in terms of running it and what goes on here. When people respond positively, that fuels me to do, do more of the same thing. And that's how it got to be the way it is. It's important to take things seriously. So you need to kind of remove all inhibitions and express yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to Baltimore County for coffee with us today. Standing on the cow car, Joe Leonard Crowart, ladies and gentlemen. Hey! hey. Listen to you. You are crazy. <laughs> Everything here is wild and crazy, but but not in any way a negative. You gotta be really careful with the crazy stuff. You walk a fine line. Like a jump, you know, a bike off the roof. that he hops on to the next, like, coolest idea. He keeps moving forward with, um, you know, like, what's the theme of this year is going to be. My commercialism side has worked because I've combined that with the fine art and the artistic expression in a way that attracts people and makes the whole system work. This magazine has us on the cover because there's a big feature in here about the two movies. All the stuff on the reality show, which you can follow on Ocean Gallery Facebook. So. It's your souvenir. Okay, right. <laughs> kind of surreal, right? It really is. Yes. Realize that's coming on. And
sometimes they bounce things off of my parents. I always, my wife, if I try a, an idea and I say, you, what do you think of this? And she says, well, that's not too bad. I usually don't do it. If she says, oh my God, not that, then I know it's strong enough and I'll do it. <laughs> But one day Joe realized that art doesn't have to be nailed to the wall in a gallery. It can move. It can roll. And that's when he got into creating art cars. I came up with an idea of driving a car off the end of the fishing pier, the Ocean City Pier, and I wanted to do that. And I was willing to do that. And we had customers who were volunteering their old family cars. I mean, everybody wanted to see their car, family car, off the pier. If you want to kind of be successful in something, you have to respect what people's feelings and tastes are by observing what makes them smile. And if they smile, you do more of it. And that's how simple this is. barge out here, pushed the car off with a bulldozer. It's part of the Ocean City fishing region. It would generate 250,000 people or so that weekend just because of that activity. And then, after we put it in the ocean, we get it out the next weekend with a chain and a bulldozer. Now we get another 200,000 people here. And the whole thing was free. And the kick of it was that I was a personality that people knew, and I was gonna, willing to do it. I was willing to do it for the benefit of the town, for the publicity, and it didn't cost anybody anything. Full speed ahead, full speed ahead. Turn left, turn left. <laughs> Does it mean, do you have do you have like ship's air horns in the thing? Uh, you mean a ship's horn? Of course. There you go. How can we dock on Television Hill without a horn? That's great, we just woke up all Woodbury. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I drove it to Baltimore, to Television Hill, had it there at four o'clock in the morning, I was on their parking lot with no cars, with a camera person, and no monitor, and I was on live TV news that morning, and I'm talking to space, imagining the people in the studio. Good morning to our neighbor. i got something else for you here. Oh, look at this. You should never be up the creek without a paddle, so I'm glad you got a paddle. Right, and we have a ship's wheel, and, uh, you know, you have to call, the captain has to call the crew. This is an old shower head. Yeah. So it works pretty well. And, of course, all hands on deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like yeah, that, Marty, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm loving this. you got to get attention, okay? That's the whole secret. Think of the boardwalk, all the stores on the boardwalk. Everybody wants everyone's attention. They want more attention than anybody else. So everybody's fighting for attention. So the key thing is to make people to stand out somehow without being outrageous, with being outrageous without being uh, over the line and offensive to anybody. And you make something huge and you publicize it different ways and it becomes an event. And that's what P.T. Barnum did. And it's entertainment. And people want to be entertained. And that's what this is all about. I gotta tell you, everybody, everybody knows your uh, your uh, place down on the boardwalk at Ocean City. So it's actually, it's a it's a landmark in Ocean City. I am too. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. You, you, you are, Joe. Inspiration is definitely people. Every day, people coming in, being so excited, saying, "I couldn't wait to get back to this place," you know. 50 million people over 50 years, and a lot of them are still around, some are still around. Um, that's incredible. 
So people in Germany see a picture of Ocean Garo, they know it's Ocean City. I've been there, yeah, I've seen it. And we've been in hundreds and hundreds of magazine, newspaper articles, been on CNN, or national news, many, many times, all kinds of interviews, and it's all the same. When people hear that the simple thing is we're presenting fine artists entertainment, we're tearing down barriers, making people feel comfortable with fine art because art's a part of life. And people say, oh yeah, you know, that's really true. Of course it's true, you know? Like, earned media is worth 10 times what paid media is. Like, you can pay to put your own messages out there, but what's worth so much more is when someone else picks up your message and spreads it for you. People love it. Guys, they stop and wave and blow horns and give you the, you know, the thumbs up and just, it's hysterical. Really. I mean, you're a classic promoter. I mean, seriously, uh, the job you do promoting your place in Ocean City is spectacular and you're going to use this to promote Ocean Gallery. work one night and I said to my dad, that thing looks like a Batmobile. He had a spray painted black, put some Batman logos on the side of it. It was the next day when I got to work, he looked at me and said, you know what? You're right. the movie Batmobile, this is the real one, okay? These are high-speed wipers. They work very fast. They're moving right now, but they're so fast you can't see them. They're special high-speed tires. If you notice, they only touch the ground at the bottom. This is a starter, just in case the other starter, the engine, doesn't work, so you just pull it. You know? And it's, it's a little difficult because it's a jet engine, it's 800 horsepower. So. This is actually a fan from a boat. Uh, candelabra, it's three candle power and it's for power outages to outwit the Joker. And these are fins off of a surfboard uh, in case uh, the Batmobile hits high waves or it goes in the water. This building and that crazy car makes a personal connection with people that's a part of their life. life. And, and generations in families love that Batmobile. <laughs> little kids have given us little bats and little figures and stuff and asked for it to be part of the Batmobile. They're in there on the, da the dashboard of the Batmobile. These little kids with their kids now with their children, bring it back and show their kids their little toy. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Yeah. 
families have contributed to the Batmobile. So they feel like they're a part of it, which is even, even more of a compliment. They like it so much that they want to be included in that too. So the mops and stuff, some of the, you know, mothers have brought in old mops and toilet brushes and paint brushes. <laughs> people's feelings are a part of it, so it's interactive. And the interactive part is what people really relate to. Families go down there and the kids start touching things and the parents say, um, Johnny, you know, it says don't you know, it says don't touch. And the kids say, but dad, it says please touch. And the father looks at the car and looks at the sign and says, Oh yeah, I guess it's alright. Really? But this is the car that's designed to be touched. That's the whole idea. never made a penny off of our cars. It's there for fun. And when people realize that, it makes it more meaningful because they're not paying for it. It's something that somebody is doing for them. And it's kind of like a favor in a way. It's free. And they respond to that very deeply. It's very, it opens them up. It makes, it's a very personal kind of a relationship. What's really important is that you know, to take something that nobody looks at, that nobody wants, and put it together with a bunch of junk and make it into something that makes people laugh. There's nothing made up on this stuff. This is all, the real stuff is so wild. You don't have to exaggerate anything. It's just, uh, you know, just incredible. I just had a gut feeling it was powerful but delicate at the same time. Right. And I knew it was a magic moment. What's, what's really important is there's special moments in time in everybody's lives, and a lot of people miss them, and there's special moments that happen all the time. People don't look. What store do you walk into, what place where anybody says, I love this place? They might think it, but to get them to actually say it, it's amazing. people that sleep in their cars that have come here over the years but they're really neat people incredible personalities sure. they're individualistic they're you know they're living the lifestyle that they want and they're doing what they enjoy there's a magic it really is there's a mystique about it I my philosophy is there's a good side there somewhere and I've got recovering alcoholics drug people recovering that come here one guy cuts her trees outside he does the gardening and stuff and his mom is 94 years old and she's taking care of this guy who's been a basket case all his life he's a good guy there's a good side to him but there's an ugly side to him too when he's here he's the good guy and i really appreciate him 
I really like him. And he knows he's liked. So he goes off on binges for six weeks or eight, he disappears, he winds up in prison, you know, he gets out of jail and he comes up. He apologized to me a couple of times because he didn't come back, but he was in jail again, you know. But he relates to us. And there's this connection that's the good side. So no matter who the person is, there's something there worthwhile. Every human, human dignity is important. People get respected here. And the value of that is really important. Paul Drew Magis, who's the top artist doing scenes of Ocean City in the whole state. He's right. downstairs, <laughs> sleeps in our celebrity room when he comes here on weekends, on the floor. We have to wake him up in the morning so that people, when we open the store, don't step on him. He's a perfect person to play jokes on. We do all kinds of things. So, okay, this we did last time he was here. See those books there? They're the, the guides, the sunny day guides. They're, we got those for him because his article is in there. So I got a whole bunch of them from Sunday Day Magazine. And when he comes, he wanted to take some and put them in his car. So he only had a couple of minutes between customers. So he, I said, come on down here, I'll open the garage and get the boxes and you know you can take them to your car. So he took a box and took it out and put it outside the door. I said, just put them down there because I have to put the door down because I, I have customers too and then you can load your car. Up. So I, I closed up the garage and he took one around the corner to put it in his garage, in his car. And I thought, you know what I should do is take the other box and hide it or put it in the garage and then go back in the store. So when he comes around to pick up the second box, he's going to go, where'd it go? Because we've done that kind of thing to him over the years. And it's so much fun because he's not sure whether that really happened, that we played a trick on him or not. He doesn't know where it went. And then he knows if he asks us, it's even more embarrassing because that's the joke. So. Um, I didn't do it this time, but he told me later, I told him that I had thought about it. He said he actually thought that when he was gonna come back, the other box wasn't gonna be there. So when it was there, it really surprised him. <laughs> so it's almost like you, you pranked him. Without so I pranked him anyway. He's so traumatized. Uh, <laughs> right, he's paranoid. And we do that kind of stuff to him all the time. I almost became a minister. Oh. which doesn't fit any of this. I went to seminary and actually checked the whole thing out and everything. I had a friend who was thinking about doing the same thing and just realized that I wasn't that good, literally, because that's, but I like the idea of helping people and getting along with people and stuff. And I think what I'm doing now is possibly the closest thing to that that I could do with my capacities. Just that he is a very kind, caring person, and he doesn't do this for self-satisfaction. He does it for the entertainment and the involvement to make art live. Ocean City is a magic place. Yeah, we know uh, that. I've been there for 30 years, and each year is more exciting. It's like a, it's like a new adventure. And you can stay at the front counter for a couple of hours any day, and somebody's going to come in with some kind of a really fine story about, you know, about coming back and <laughs> what they got 10 years ago and how they still love it. And when I learn about people and what their tastes are and what they like and what turns them on here, I'll give them a little something, some kind of a souvenir that ties in with that little photo of the Batmobile or something like that. But only after I've recognized what they like. There was a woman who uh, was at the counter and my, my dad had taken an extra minute and told her about the building and, uh, and had given her a, a copy of Sunny Day and a couple things. And he kind of, he, he put things into a bag and said, here's your souvenir. And she said, you're like God. I thought, did I really hear that? And Laura looked at me like, Dad, you're God. <laughs> I enjoy the great part of each 
individual person. And I don't care who the person is, walking in here, there's something about them that is admirable and that's fascinating. So I think it's respect for human dignity is really important, and that's what we have, and people feel that. And that's the personal connection. And once you've done something like that, it's like a, uh, a random act of kindness, kind of. People don't expect that. And they recognize that, remember it, and it's a personal connection. And they come back five years later and say, oh, I was here, you gave me one of those little things. It's really great. If you just gave somebody something, you know, big deal. But it's that it is personal because I knew that they'd like it. And they didn't necessarily know that I knew, but they figured later that I picked up on it. I tell you, I, uh, a long time ago, I decided that this whole thing, uh, that art is fun and that you know, you got to enjoy life and appreciate life. And I do all this stuff because it makes people smile. And then the other stuff comes along with it. Art is life. Um, cavemen, right? Put drawings on the wall. Why? To interpret their life, to remember things. Um, kind of a scrapbook of their lives, fun things. Um, we don't do that. We go and buy an artist's sketch or drawing and put it up on our cave walls, but it's the same thing, you know, and it makes our lives better. And I think what I've done is over the years is I've made millions of people, it's millions now, I've probably dealt on a one-to-one -one basis with people buying stuff. I'm probably more than anyone in the world. When Saturn used to, Saturn cars, they used to be, I think, the first like automobile industry that came out with just the bottom line price. You don't go to a Saturn, you didn't go to a Saturn dealer to haggle. You just went and they gave you the best price. So I would say, consider us the Saturn dealer of fine art. The price you see on there is the best price we can give you. This is what drives me. If I'd have been in the food business, had a restaurant, I'd be retired by now. I'm still running around doing all this crazy stuff because it's a real challenge. It's kind of like playing chess or a game every year, putting it all together, and then seeing things work is a great feeling of satisfaction. I always tell people I remember coming here as a kid in the 70s and walking through this place. I think I bought a Yes poster at the time. And I, of course, as a kid, walking through a place like this, it's like very overwhelming. I was totally freaked out by it. Bought my poster and it's kind of etched in my memory. And now I tell people I've worked here 26 and a half years and it still freaks me out. <laughs> Buy not sale! Just another, another astounding event um, from us to you. and spectacular parts of life, it's the challenge, it's the challenge of the future. The adventure which starts off early each day because that's the reality of what's going on here. And this is really cool. Yeah. right in the middle of cutting a mat, I'll pass out and croak. Hmm.
room the electric room and I'm like why is this back here I, just, yeah, I mean I found it years ago I was like this is freaking awesome, yeah, awesome. and I brought it out and put up and he freaked out <laughs> the next thing I know is like where did it go and I found it and I put it back up again next time I come in it's gone displays an extra like for the racks for flat so well I mean displays for images we already have we should have a backup flat it's almost like a father-son relationship because you could be like, you could hear a, like the disgust, like you moved that. I didn't want that moved. I didn't want it done that way. And then Dave's like, but I did it that way because of this. And then Joe will have to think about it. And then I'm like, well, okay, but you know, it's like that father-son, like I know best, and you know. Okay, go ahead. I'm rolling it. Good. Excellence is, is his goal in everything that he does. And that is totally incredible. It's uh, very, very unusual to find somebody with those kinds of standards. Back went out, it hurt so bad. I was laying underneath the building in this crawl space and I couldn't crawl out from under it. Finally crawled out and I was laying, laying in the back on phone court for a while. But then of course, typical Ocean Gallery story, it gets better. So I'm thinking, I'm in pain, I've got to go home and lay down. So I called Joe because it must have been off season. And he tells me that I got to stay around because customers bought something the previous night and they weren't coming back till this afternoon to get it. This is something from for you from Moncton. It's a Moncton Meadow Muffin gift hey. wrap. What I learned most from, from years of working with my father is the importance of having fun while doing it. I, you know, in, in thinking through where my life is going a lot this summer, my dad has said, it's important for you to do what you want to do. Like, you, you shouldn't be, I mean, this sounds, you know, luxurious, but you shouldn't settle for going to a job every day where you feel like you're, like, just getting by and you don't like going in there. How about it's that? truly an amazing story to think about. True. Marilyn yeah. pictured like that. I think that there is like a legacy of Ocean Gallery that will live on. I think it will just probably go on the way it is. I, I, everyone kind of knows like their niche and what they're good at and what works well and what helps the other person out. I just see it continuing the way it is. Joe, listen, we're going to the network right now. You guys hang on. We'll be back to you and Sky Chopper 13 in Ocean City after this network break. We'll ask everybody to stay with us, please. Thank you.
show folks and it's really been a lot of fun being here today and we just like to say that in the spirit of P.T. Barnum this is the end and we'll wave to you goodbye goodbye bye come on up here Laura wave goodbye goodbye goodbye